Well, hello guys. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be going back to war with Austria, England, and uh, Bohemia to uh, hopefully get a little bit of clay here from the Emperor. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the campaign and you have been enjoying it up to this point, make sure you let me know by uh, leaving a like on the video. It does help me out a lot more than you might know. And uh, most importantly, I hope that you've learned a thing or two. So right now we're getting some stuff over here converted. This is fine. Uh, in the last episode, in the last couple of episodes, we've been doing quite a bit of... Um, maximizing of our of our money which i think is really good coalition is forming huh coalition shouldn't grow i don't think we have to worry about that so i'm not going to right now now yeah this one is the one that we're kind of holding off on we're going to see if we need it we might not need it so we are converting this province here which is the one that we need to convert then the rest of one the other one would be like qatar so let's convert Qatar. There we go. Now I would like to get these guys off of this fort. Okay, let's um. Hopefully they don't win that. Very good. They got a disease outbreak actually. That's great. We got a gift. Awesome. Uh, I don't care about Venice. Seed Alexandria to Venice. Uh, no, Venice. You can pound sand, as they say. And Venice enters a coalition against us. Son of a biscuit. All right. Well, let us it's time to catch these guys out over here. We have our 5-6 general, so it should be pretty straightforward. This one should be an absolute clap. Look at these losses they're taking. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we have the correct advisor. Morale, I would rather have discipline, so we're going to switch over to a discipline advisor. We have the money to upgrade them, so we might as well. And, uh, yep, phase one is upon us. Kill all their armies. Lose some prestige, sadly. It happens from time to time. This might be a white. Okay, tyrannical nobles. We got a couple of events here. Lose a base tax, don't care. Half off diplo rep. I'd rather have a half off trade guy, which we do. Or uh, half off. Okay, well, either one. We're not going to use either of them, so it doesn't really matter. So these guys are locked in over here. Let's see if we can catch that 17 stack and wipe them out. Oh, wow. That river crossing getting us, but it's okay. Um. They attacked us. I will take the mercantilism. We're getting a lot of events right now. Now, there we go. Yep, look how many men they've lost. I've lost 18, and they have lost 38. Just just them alone. So, all is well. Now we got to come over here and start catching out all the little stacks. And now we begin the Carpus Siege. And that's how you do it. The Blitzkrieg. They still have a ton of men, but remember, we're not really worried about that. Make sure that your navy is hunting enemy fleets. They are. Very good. We have lots of galleys as well. The galleys are going to be what gets us through this war. Or through this campaign, even. The great legal reform. Interesting. Codify the Ottoman laws or leave it be. Stab and reform progress or a bunch of autonomy, discount, innovativeness, legalism. The autonomy doesn't matter. Because we are basically are at lowest autonomy. So the question is, do we need innovativeness? No. We want the legalism. But um, 10 mysticism is nothing. I think I'd rather have the stability. So we're going to go with stability. That's kind of a judgment call, I think. I would I would use your best judgment in that one. Um, Macedonia gets some bonuses. That's fine. Let's uh, scorch pest. Just to see if they want to be stupid. All right. Looks like they're going to be stupid. So let's have these lads grouped up over here. They'll be there on the 15th. And as long as we're there around then, we'll be good. These guys will be there on the 25th. And these guys will be there on the 27th. Very good. 26th. So they're reinforcing quite a bit. Oh, wow. They're reinforcing with so many men. Yeah, we're going to lose this. All right. This is what I call the AI dogpiling. So we're going to flee back here. They still take crazy heavy losses. We have plenty of force limit to spare. We have plenty of mill mana to spare as well. So let's conscript some Janissaries here. 12. Wow. All right. That is good. And then we will also conscript some cannons to join the army. We have the economy. There's literally no reason to not do it. So yeah, even though we took that bad battle, they've still lost so many more men than we have. So we're fine. We're in a good spot. 
All right. So this is still a our best stack right here. So let's get them together. Then this stack here will be a backup stack. All right. Let's continue to convert everything. All right. Now, basically, I'm sitting back and I'm waiting until they get onto forts because these forts here are going to be like all of these forts. Literally, these three here are all just examples of places where we can just clap them without even worrying about it at all. Like, it, we will win. Even if we're outnumbered, we will win as long as they have negative, negative three mod fire. Sadly, Zagreb is grasslands, but that's okay. Shift consolidate before going into battle. This should be an absolute destroy. Even if they're reinforcing a ton, we are doing so much more casualties than they are. We have a better general as well as we have higher discipline. So these battles are, they're nothing for us at this point, which is good. Our army tradition is also pretty solid. Let's come on up here and siege down Vienna. These lads here are, we're going to go, what? let these guys grouped up real quick. You can call in Tunis. I don't think we'll do that. We don't need them. Here we go. So we'll siege down Vienna very quickly. We have max spy network. Always maximize your spy network in your enemy's lanes if you need to. A 3-5 is pretty good. Also, I wanted to explain a couple of things because I've... I've I, you know, I've kind of branded this series as a beginner-friendly tutorial series, um, but I still get a lot of comments that are, like, not necessarily questions. They're more just people telling me that they disagree with me, which is fine. I mean, I'm certainly... Everybody's entitled to their opinion on things, but I just wanted to talk about a couple of things because I particularly have had a lot of hostile comments about uh, forts and how my forts are, quote-unquote, useless as a, a few people have said so i'm going to tell you right now if you're looking at my fort line this is ideal this is a type of fort line that you want because multiple things they cannot get into my land so these border forts this is key right here this is good and this is the one that most people would agree most of these forts up here are good forts but everybody kind of has been nitpicking not everybody of course but a lot of people have been nitpicking where i put them this is fine as long as you have a continuous line it's good and then if you can have them in terrain provinces like uh, Belgrade here, which is hills, which gives you uh, negative or gives you defensiveness bonuses as well as uh, terrain bonuses for battle. Same with the marsh, you get the you get a minus one to the enemy if you attack them on their fort on this fort here. Um, the one that seems to be contentious is like forts around here uh, because they're internal and they're coastal. People tend to not really understand why coastal forts are so useful. A, they help with devastation. They reduce the devastation. So if you're getting blockaded, which does happen quite often in war, especially if you have coastal provinces, of course, um, it helps with the devastation there. But it also, it makes it so it's harder for them to land. If they land men here in, in like Terhala, for example, they have to seize these provinces down before they can get to my capital. If I don't have this fort here, they can march right onto my capital. So before people leave comments telling me that my forts are bad, I'm going to tell you as a rebuttal, my forts are perfect, and I'm confident of that. Also, I got a comment that was saying that my fort in Baghdad was a bad idea. I disagree. <laughs> and uh, my reasons are for the ones that I just gave. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of insight as into why. Because I do I do know that I sometimes have built a few things and not really explained necessarily why. I think it's the right move. But uh, all of that is good. So yeah, we don't need to be fighting those guys over there. But I will attack these guys here. That should be fine. Very good. Shift consolidate. They want to attack me. This is fine. Our morale is low, but um, ah, sadly, they're taking these really heavy losses. But at least we got a re regen or a uh, monthly tick there. All right. So England somehow. So here, I want you guys to riddle me this. Why is England so useful right now? Where they're actually bringing tens of thousands of men into my land as the Ottomans. When in a Flanders campaign that I'm playing, I'm they will not they will not siege down Denmark. <laughs> it happens. It happens, right? It's annoying. Um, obviously we don't need to be taking that tech. Has our governing capacity, it's pretty good. So yeah, we just need to be a little mindful of this. Let's have these guys come up here. These guys are I just want them in my friendly territory to regen a couple of ticks for um forces we got a one siege general we'll get you over here onto vienna should be good especially if they're just running in with these little one stacks we'll go one more month with these lads here get them in there uh that's fine 
All right. Now's the fun part where we have multiple stacks in their land and they say, oh, you know, I need to defend my land. Oh, I need to, you know, reinforce these battles, but they can't do either of them. So now we're sieging down his capital. We sack their capital. Feels good, man. Feels very good, man. Transfer it off. Transylvania gets uh, really good defensiveness bonuses. Let's have these guys come up here. They're going to reinforce, but uh, guess what? So are we. So even though they have all those men in there, mm, yeah, they're reinforcing with quite a few men. Yeah, we're actually going to lose that. They're just reinforcing with too many. Yep, sadly. Uh, so what we're going to do is go a couple more days and we're going to flee. Right that way, they're all here on the monthly tick and they all take that cr crazy attrition tick right there. Boom. And just like that, Austria has lost 112,000 men. Just Austria alone. That's nuts. Uh, we're going to max out on admin. So do a couple of admin clicks. It's fine. It's not the way you should do it. You don't want to be deving it if you don't have to, but it's fine. Now, this army over here is still suppressing, so I'm going to hold them. I'm going to keep them there. Do they have any cannons? We got a few cannons, so that stack is definitely not combat ready. These guys are fleeing over here. All right, that doesn't make sense. That pathing was bad. Try to keep them behind the enemy forts, or friendly forts, rather. There we go. That should be a clap. Just kidding, apparently. Are you joking? All right, they somehow reinforced that fight. They, they should have gotten overrun there. I don't know if I shift consolidated it or not. I actually wasn't paying attention to that one. All right, let's get these guys grouped up. Shift consolidate. And leave all the empty regiments behind. We have a lot of them. And so what that does is that will tell our... Uh, that will allow our armies... Send these guys in here. So this is full strength. We don't necessarily have a full front row, but it should be pretty straightforward. We should go in and just, like, destroy them. Even if they reinforce a bit, it should be fine. Man, they are just stacking their men in here. Let's uh, scorch that province as well. Let's get up here since this is a hills fort. Oh, looks like they uh, teleported their men out. And now they're over here sieging down Vienna and also sieging down over here. So we'll keep these guys in friendly land. Um, I'll lose the Diplo. That's fine. And I guess we'll just keep converting stuff. We're winning naval battles. Very good. Get an admiral in there, definitely. If you can have an admiral versus not have an admiral, you should always have an admiral. Oh, I think I was a month off. No, we're good. Very good. That should be an absolute destruction. Yep, right there. They are dead now. And, um, oopsies. Their general is really bad. We have our infantry combat ability general, so. Oh, oh, wow. Well, that's some destruction right there. Even if they're reinforcing... Yeah, they're going to reinforce in time. That's fine. Look at these losses they're taking, though. There's no way they can sustain this. So this example... This this war right here is a really good example of uh, the AI death warring. He's at 5 war exhaustion. I'm at point 0.1, okay? My vassals are getting sieged down. I don't care. I don't care at all. Uh, the, the, the war goal is right here. So once we take that, we'll be able to do... This is what we would like to take. The AE is a little much. Yeah, we probably can't do it. Uh, once I click this guy, we'll get a claim, but it's not permanent. So that's why I'm holding off on it. So I think we'll just take this for now. And then we'll take these in the next war. Maybe like just that right there. Hmm. Interesting. Something to think about. All right. Let's pull these guys into friendly territory as well. Let them regen for a month or two. These guys are just relentless. They are relentless. All right. If they want to reinforce, they can. I will I will also reinforce. Jeez, man. These guys are actually just so relentless. Look at this. have these guys come up here with a general of course three five is good that way if i need to reinforce i can shouldn't need to yep very good all right get those guys down there and let the carpet siege begin that's this is a crazy war we're actually I'll also maxed out on admin again this is fine 
I'm not full coring stuff because I want to make sure that we're leaving. Um... Really? They're attacking them in the hills? Okay, there we go. I'll attack them in the hills. It's fine. It's fine. That's a wipe. Let's uh, carpet siege down the area we're trying to siege in this war. Or take in this war. So we don't have a full back line of cannons, but I will shift consolidate and we'll send in every, as many men as we can. Hopefully the battle's over before the monthly tick. Very good. We're going to teleport in our three maneuver guys so we can maximize our uh, recovery. Manpower uh, reinforcement, rather. So just like that, our manpower is, like, gone. <laughs> so that's pretty nuts. This next tech is solid. I'm just going to take it. I don't care. I've done enough admin dev. I don't want to be doing too much. That will allow us to get a couple of these guys. And uh, basically, state houses are pro buildings that you want to build in as many uh, high dev states as you can because what it does is it lowers the governing cap governing cost for this entire state this is 50 if you build a state house in there you see state house is a governing cost for the whole state 20 percent so that's pretty good you can also build it in overseas like in uh you can see here it says five percent local autonomy so that also helps with um also helps with uh, the autonomy of territories which is lo locked at 90 so you see right there so it helps with getting a better goods produced out of those provinces. All right. They're offering me peace. They say, we will uh, give you a couple of provinces here. But since they, since uh, Paradox Shadow nerfed it, so you actually gain the full amount of uh, aggressive expansion now, it's not worth... Basically, Paradox changed it, so it's never worth um, accepting a peace deal from the, from the AI. Because it used to be, if um, if the AI sent you a peace offer, you would get half AE for it if you accepted it. And Paradox randomly, with for no reason, changed it to be, you got it no matter what. You get the full amount of AE. So, it's a really sad thing. I, I'm not happy to see that change. I feel like it was completely unnecessary. But, I don't know. You know, it was one of those changes in 1.31 that didn't really make a lot of sense to me. But, you know. I'm just one guy. I'm sure there are a lot of people that thought that it was very exploitable as well. So I understand the argument for the nerf. I just don't personally appreciate it. All right. That's only nine cannons, really? Let's have you guys, like, come up here and get some cannons in that stack. Let's also get our cab in that stack as well. If we were going to hit him with the shock and awe, we're going to hit him with the shock and awe, right? Shift consolidate. Get on in there, baby. Let's actually... Ooh, we don't have our best general, though, sadly. That's okay. Ooh, yikes. Hopefully... Okay, never mind. Right, we scorched it. So we're actually crushing them. Convert that province there. God is great, indeed. All the time, brother. Here we go. So let's get up here and siege down Prague. Get your shot glasses ready. And let's have you guys come over here. Siege down this province. Trade efficiency. Uh, wait, he's not half off. I was thinking he was. Well, sadly, Ruthenian culture, hmm, yeah, that's not going to do it. We want to be able to upgrade them. So I guess we'll go with the full cost level three trade advisor. Trenchin, give that province over here. And uh, just like that, we can basically take whatever we want in this war. So the question is, is what do we want in this war? We could humiliate them for some bigger PP, and uh, I'm actually tempted to do that. Oh my gosh, these these like little two stacks everywhere that are just sitting there waiting to reinforce are so so frustrating to play against because the AI just stacks like a little three four stack on every province. But yeah, that's uh that's fine. This is our four star siege guy, so or a four siege general, so we'll get him up there as well. And we should win these sieges pretty quickly. Sadly, we got busted spying. And we actually get the bonus here because they are an, un they are an underling, so to speak, of uh, Austria. So we get the, sp the siege ability bonuses against them. All right. So this is an example of when you want to dev because we can get mill tech. We don't need it that early. We don't want to be paying that much mill mana for it. So it's definitely more efficient to spend a little bit of uh, money on or mana on deving. And whenever I say mana, I just mean... Monarch points. It's just a, a shorthand for monarch points. So I got a question asking me about wh wh why do you keep saying mana? What does mana mean? So I apologize for that if I wasn't clear in what that meant. Gold rush. Oh, yeah. All right. Cool. Well, let's build a couple of these state houses as well, especially in these sorts of states where the governing cost is quite high. 
in overseas territories. And also you can see here, if you build it in paper, glass, or gems, you get more. We don't have paper, glass, or gems over here, so no worries there. Let's see here. And you can actually find this. I guess I should show you here. If you go to your states, you can actually find the province that has the most um, governing cost here. Where are we at? Oh, maybe not. I would just sort it by development. Obviously, Thrace is the most, and then Wallachia is the second most. So if you take a look at how much it costs to govern this state, 64 per month or 64 governing capacity. So if you look around, look for a good produced. There's not nothing worth build it like nothing that makes it stand out over the other ones so then you build a state house just anywhere in here and then over here your capital state you never need to because you get a governing capacity it's like 99 percent governing capacity cost or something along those lines uh the modifier that is so pretty solid and uh yeah so basically we're just getting everything sorted out sieging them down we're gonna full occupy them more than likely that way i can get the peace deal that i want I need to piece out England separately because England is giving them a lot of enthusiasm to be in the war. looks like they've won the Siege of Tulsu, Tulsu. So they can actually march right on to Constantinople if they want to. There's nothing stopping them. Do I see... What? Oh, okay. So Stetten attacked Volgast with the uh, Commonwealth as a, as a help. That's uh, good on them, I guess. All right, let's get two of you guys down there. Let's get a siege guy over there. Let's have our right other general over here. Basically, I just don't want them to siege the stuff back. That's the AI is annoying. They'll they'll avoid any conflict, and in the meantime, they'll carpet siege you down. Okay. So, our king is dead. Our guy is dead. Long live the new guy, Mustafa, who is bad. But um, sadly, only time will tell. That's unfortunate. Do not recall who our, our previous guy was, but I think he was too young to die. But anyways, I don't want to take a loan out. So in order to pay the Janissaries, we're going to debase a couple of provinces here. That'll just keep you from having to take a loan out. Sadly, a 3-1-2 is pretty bad. Again, 10 is the point total you're looking for. So that's only, what is a 6? So below average. Not ideal, but it is what it is. All right, so these guys are over here handling all that. Let's get these guys grouped up over here because they're probably going to be annoying. Yep, they got a lot of men over here. And you can see here, we hardly have any war score. Oh, they took the war goal back. All right, let's get the war goal back for one. Get the war goal back. And then we will um, look to piece them out. Very good. I don't know where their armies are, to be honest with you. Okay, this is grassland, so I'm okay with attacking them here. Split them up. This is fine. Shift consolidate. I know that this isn't like the best war you've ever seen. Uh, mostly, I'm just trying to kind of show you guys what you're what what you should be doing uh, in a big war. So, like you can see here, we've inflicted crazy amount of casualties. Austria alone has lost 200,000 men. They have no manpower. Austria is done. They're done for. They're not even the emperor anymore, actually. So that's that's really good for us. Um, so England is on medium enthusiasm. They will be willing to peace out before too long. If we come down here and we kill off his armies, he's going to be even more willing. So that's what we're going to do here. And we need to win this siege back as well because it's annoying AI. Sieging down my lands. Sons of guns. Magdeburg wants out. White peace. That's fine. Gladly. All right, England. That should be enough to get you out. Nope. Close though. All right. Okay, we're going to speed five the rest of this war, but I think I, you know, illustrated sufficiently what uh, a stomp looks like in EU4. Um, again, I'd rather dev, I think. Let's take a look at our edicts here. So let's take a look at the, a good way to look at this is look at your map mode here. Let's turn this one on um, dev cost. Make sure that you have burgers. You do. Uh, what is this one here? A mosque in Selenik, right? So let's do that. Let's build a mosque there since we can afford it. And then we have prosperity in this province as well. So it's an additional 10% dev cost. Stack those modifiers, baby. Stack them up. Go to your dev map mode. This is the way I like to do it at least. And then you just dev them all up like that. Mm -hmm. Lots of cloth over here as well in, uh, in uh, Anatolia. So there you go. 
There we go. Max manpower is way higher now as well. 1,600 manpower a month. Not bad. Um, so yeah, we're in the hole. So we got to be mindful of that. Don't want to be losing a bunch of manpower. Mines wants out. Sounds good. England is going to be close within the next two to three months. So oh, I'm just trying to not lose too many manpower to... Um, to uh, whatchamacallit. Attrition. Let's have these guys come over here. Beirut wants out, or however that's pronounced. England is going to want out next month, if I recall. There you go. England will wipe peace now, and now we're at 60% relative war score. It's really solid. We wanted to get a claim on these guys down here, and I should do that. On Spock wants out as well, and every everybody that you white piece out is giving you a relative war score, so it's good to white piece as many people as possible. If you're not caring, if you don't care about them being, you know, in your, if you don't care about having a long truce with them, that is. Um, so that's a lot of dev we're taking. We're gonna give it all to Transylvania. Um, let me see here. I see embraced. Slovak, this is Hungarian culture. So he'll probably embrace it if I had to guess. So yeah, we will, we'll give it all to Transylvania. That's fine. And we have to take it for ourselves since we declared the war for a conquest for ourselves. We have to take it for ourselves and we'll just give it to them afterwards. Take some money from them as well because screw you. Let's see here. Let's um Let's uh let's peace out a few other people and get these guys isolated. Got some guys rising up over here. I'll actually handle them for them and help them out. On halt, Frankfurt doesn't want out, really. Alright, this is fine. Um Humiliate, war reps, and we're gonna take as much money as they're willing to give us. I'd like to get a few more hundred than what they're offering me. That doesn't seem appropriate considering the fact that they are utterly defeated. I think the sieges over here in Crimea are helping them. Ticking war score is not necessarily entirely in our favor as well. This is fine. Kill off a few more of their armies. Here we go. Couple more occupations. 69 war score. Nice. Now we can probably get whatever we want here. Oh, look. The plebs demand pizza. Call for peace has officially been changed to a picture of pizza. Very good, Artemis. Well played. Artemis UI. I would label that as an essential mod. There we go. I am going to yoink the dev here. No, actually, I will not. I will not yoink the dev. Because them being in a strong position is fine with me. I'll pay off his debts, and I will grant them these provinces. And then before, whenever we want to go to war with them again, we have this mission down here to click. That will allow us to get a claim on here. This will give us regular claims. So regular claims don't click the mission. Because regular claims only last for 25 years, if I recall correctly. And then we're going to have a truce with them for, you know, 12, 13, given, depending on our, how our, big our peace deal was. So there's no reason to do that. Just wait, because then that means you're in a much more of a time crunch. Um, so we'll wait off on that. Um, so see, our governing capacity is probably really good now. Oh, yeah, not even close. So that's awesome. All right, let's get our armies... All grouped up in Constantinople, and we'll get them sorted out here. Uh, yeah, we'll use our navy to pull those guys over. That is fine. Got some galleys over here that need to be grouped up. We'll pull them in. Navy versus army tradition. Always take the army tradition. Basically, that means you get better generals. There's literally nothing wrong with that. People are asking for mill access, and that is fine. I know I'm playing a lot faster than I was in the beginning. That's mostly because at this point, realistically, we're we're pretty much done uh, with the opening point of the game. Opening stuff is is important. It's where a lot of the you know frustrations tend to come. I'm just gonna lose this dab because we can afford to boost it up. I also got a comment saying that I sh you should never use your spare admin to stab up. You should use it to dev. Ignore people who say that. Keep your stab at three if you can. It's key. It's gonna. It makes your it makes your uh, nation so much more stable. So, I'm going to show you guys about army templates. So, an army template is essentially what happens. It is a 
template that allows you to conform your armies to a specific type. So if we take a look here at our, um, where are we at here? Our combat width is 27. So if we open up our macro builder and you go to our template here, we're going to create one and we want it to be what I, I think is a 27, right? 27. So we want a combat width of 27. We have some cav combat ability bonuses. So we're going to go up to six cav and you want 21 infantry. And then you want a full back row of cannons if you can afford it. So this will be our regular or our regular stack, right? So obviously we, d we have a lot more. Um, we don't have that many cav, but we have a lot more infantry than that. So what will happen? Okay, well. Bad example. We can't conform to it right now because we don't have the manpower. But in a couple of months, we will. So, let's get our navy fixed up here. Have you guys go protect trade in Alexandria, Aleppo. Right, because we're steering a lot of trade into Aleppo now. Very good. Making 59 ducats a month in trade. We can now embrace institution here. Diplo, we can wait to the yearly tick to take it, which is fine. There's nothing nothing wrong with that. Now, these guys may accept vassalization. If I attack them right now, I can take Mecca and Medina. So I think I'm going to do that. Are these guys suppressing still? They are. All right. Um, we still have zero manpower as well. All right. Just because I feel like it, I, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but we're going to do this just so I can um, show you guys what I was trying to do here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click this. It will build those two cav and it will detach the ones that we don't need, which is more cannons and um, infantry. Again, click this again here. And then these infantry. Now, now ideally what's going to happen is it's going to detach. It doesn't decipher between special infantry and regular infantry. So if you want a template specifically with certain numbers of infantry, you have to detach them manually. So we want to have 21 there. So we'll get rid of these guys. We'll just get rid of them. These lads will build up to the template there. And um, then we'll be able to pull them down. So I'm going to take this tech. There's no reason not to. I, you can dev if you want. I'm not going to dev. It's fine. Um, some separatists in Crimea, really. And he's got no in army either. Mm. All right. Let's, um, let's get our army over there. Again, it's control right click to tell your army essentially, hey, use the boats. Otherwise, if there is no direct land route, they'll they'll go by boat anyways. A little bit of... I'm not going to take corruption. Corruption is an annoying mechanic, and I don't use it. I do not uh, take it if I can avoid it. All right, let's get rid of you guys and see if we can get ourselves a trade advisor. Very good. Up to level three. Let's trade, it. trade efficiency advisors give you so much return on the investment you make with them. All right. So, these armies are now... The 21, 6, 27. So, beautiful. We're going to split it in half because there's no reason to have them a full stack there. And then these guys over here. We're going to come down here, grab you, split you in half. We'll have that half come up here and this half will just hang out over here. Let's actually have this half drilling. And um, rebel factions are just these Shia zealots. So, I'm going to have these guys attach him as well and drill so we can make up a little bit of that... Um, Army, army professionalism that we lost when I uh, pulled that army. Uh, we slackened those standards a minute ago. Now, slackening standards is useful if you're, you know, in a pinch, you need manpower. So as far as this guy, we got Hadramut, Makuria. Yeah, none of these guys matter to me. Makuria may not join, actually. If somebody gets onto their capital, we'll be good. Mm-hmm. This uh, supply limit is super useful. I'm actually just going to take this tech right now. Supply limit basically means how many men you can stand on one province without them taking attrition. Super nice. Upgrade your infantry. Always upgrade them if you can. There's no reason not to. All right. We're going to attack them. Now, I just... I really would like for somebody to stand on Makuria. There we go. Makuria probably will not join now. Very good. Occupied and besieged provinces is a heck of a modifier. I tell you that. Let's have you guys come down here and have these guys come over here. Our cancelism is tight. But uh, yeah, so in this war, we're just going to full annex them. There's no reason to not take them. Mainly, we want Mecca and Medina because you get the triggered modifier. Custodian of the Holy Cities, no coalition will form. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, that's fine. 
here we go very good very good now the issue is that Hadramut is like down here we'll have to march down there and siege them down so we can piece them out aside from that this war is over not bad right very quick quick and quick and easy i hope you guys learned a little bit today um i know today was mostly just us you know kicking our enemy's teeth in but we inflicted a lot of casualties and admittedly we uh oh nice these guys were fighting our rebels for us now there's no fort there so they'll, they're, they just will force convert that province which is a bummer uh now hopefully there was a missionary there already that would continue their work but i'm pretty sure it cancels yep if you have a province that gets occupied by um um by zealots if there's no fort zone of control there they um it will convert the province so and it also canceled out the um the person the uh the do you know the thing the dude missionary take all their money and these guys will get pieced out here in a moment hope you guys enjoyed that's all i got for you for today but uh before i want to peace out here i want to show you this very good and uh, next month, we'll get Custodian of the Holy Cities, which gives us an extra merchant, as well as uh, yearly legitimacy. So it's always nice to stack up as many merchants as you can. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for you for today. This is Chewy Shoot, and I'll catch you guys later.